Right, let's address the elephant in the room that mainstream automotive media refuses to acknowledge. You see, while the rest of the world accelerated into the EV era, Japan's biggest automakers made a catastrophic miscalculation. Now, before anyone gets defensive, I genuinely want Honda and Nissan to succeed. These are companies that built some of the most reliable cars in history and their automotive world is better when they're competitive. But the 15 billion pound investment these manufacturers have made hasn't delivered the results UK buyers deserve. And by the end of this video, I'm going to reveal the three critical factors that will determine whether they can recover their competitive edge or whether they're, they're heading for complete irrelevance in the EV era. This analysis is for anyone considering a purchase decision. If you already own a Honda or Nissan EV and you're happy with it, that's, that's brilliant. Your satisfaction matters most. But if you're thinking about buying one, then let me show you exactly what the competitive landscape looks like right now. This isn't just about falling behind. This is about three of the world's largest automakers systematically destroying their future competitiveness. And for UK buyers considering Japanese EVs, the implications are massive. So let me show you exactly why collapse isn't hyperbole, it's, it's observable reality. You see, Honda's current EV lineup in Europe consists of, well, essentially one model, the Honda E. It was quietly discontinued last year, leaving just the ENY1. But look, here's the telling detail. Honda doesn't even publish UK sales figures for their EVs. And when a manufacturer won't tell you how their products are selling, that usually means their numbers are a little embarrassing. Meanwhile, Hyundai happily reports their EV growth across Europe because frankly, they're winning. Now this one genuinely pains me because Nissan, as you all know, they created this market. You see, the original Leaf was revolutionary given ordinary families access to electric driving when Tesla was still a luxury curiosity. And they deserve to be leading this transition. But here's where the strategic execution fell short. You see, while Nissan was celebrating their early Leaf success, competitors were quietly building the infrastructure, the scaling technology, and capturing the market Nissan had pioneered. The Aria represents Nissan's genuine attempt to reclaim their position. It's actually a well-engineered car with some innovative features like the E-Force system. Now the problem isn't the engineering quality, it's the market timing and competitive context. Now look, let me be honest, if you're a Nissan Leaf or Aria owner and it serves your needs perfectly, I'm, I'm not suggesting you rush out and change it. These are fundamentally solid vehicles that will continue serving their own as well and serving you well. But prospective buyers, the transparency issue, I don't know, it tells a different kind of story. You see, neither Honda nor Nissan published their UK sales figures, which makes it difficult to assess their market confidence and local support commitment. The Aria represents Nissan's flagship response to this new reality. But it's arriving to a party where Korean manufacturers have been serving better food for years. And look, this hits home for all of us because neither Honda nor Nissan will tell us how the EVs are actually performing in the UK market. And that's usually corporate speak for, well, not well enough to brag about. Now let's examine how these companies ended up in this challenging position because understanding their strategic decisions helps us predict their recovery potential. This is where we can see the logic behind their approach. All three Japanese manufacturers bet their futures on hybrid technology being a bridge to full EVs. And from an engineering perspective, that made complete sense. Improve efficiency while waiting for charging infrastructure to mature. You see, the problem wasn't the strategy itself, it was the execution timeline. While they were perfecting hybrid systems that customers genuinely loved, competitors were making bigger bets on pure electro electric technology and infrastructure development. And here's where the strategic miscalculation becomes really clear. Japan, despite inventing lithium ion battery technology, didn't scale manufacturing for the EV transition. And this isn't necessarily a permanent disadvantage. I think companies can build battery capacity if they commit the resources. To be honest, right now, when Honda and Nissan need batteries for their EVs, they're buying from their suppliers who also serve their competitors. And Honda's choice to use the GM Ultimate platform for their prologue actually shows smart resource allocation. And in some ways, why reinvent the wheel? But for long-term competitiveness, platform control matters enormously. 
And companies that control their EV platforms can iterate faster, they can customize more effectively, and they can differentiate their products. Now, recent investment adjustments from both manufacturers reflect market realities rather than strategic failures. And Honda's partnership approach and Nissan's alliance strategies could actually prove more resilient than going it alone. Uh, do you know what? I think the question isn't whether they, they made mistakes, it's whether they can execute their recovery plans faster than competitors can extend their advantages. Now, while competitors were scaling up, Japanese manufacturers were scaling back. Honda recently reduced their EV investment commitment and Nissan canceled a major battery factory just this year. Meanwhile, Korean manufacturers are launching new models quarterly and Chinese brands are expanding globally. And even struggling European manufacturers are committing massive resources to electrification. So let me show you exactly where Japanese manufacturers stand today versus the competition that's eating their lunch. As you probably well know, Japanese brands are now dominating the whole global EV sales. Korean manufacturers have captured the premium but accessible segment that Toyota and Honda traditionally owned. And, and German brands, they're throwing everything at electrification just to survive. And Japanese manufacturers? They're watching from the sidelines of a market they helped create. You see, the Ionic 5 charges faster than most Japanese EVs can dream of. The Kia EV6 offers more range and better technology than anything Honda or Nissan currently sell in the UK. And then there's that Chinese elephant in the room. BYD isn't just succeeding in China, they're expanding globally with EVs that offer premium features at mainstream prices. Now here's where it gets really personal for UK buyers and I need to ask you something directly. When Chinese manufacturers achieve production scales that established brands can't match and they're offering better EVs for less money, should brand familiarity really matter more than getting the best product. You see, here in the UK, we're seeing this play out in real time. Government ZEV mandates require increasing percentages of EV sales each year. Miss those targets and manufacturers pay penalties that just get passed on to consumers. And Japanese manufacturers are struggling to meet these targets without relying on hybrid credits or pain fines. In, in my opinion, that's not a sustainable business model. That's managed decline. Meanwhile, Hyundai and Kia have quietly become the smart choice for UK buyers. They're offering proper EV technology at reasonable prices with dealer networks that actually understand electric vehicles. The reality, Japanese EVs charge slower, they offer less range, and they include fewer features. And their Korean and their Chinese competitors are just doing a much better job. These aren't minor differences, these are generational gaps that affect daily ownership experience. And when Chinese manufacturers achieve production scales that established brands can't match, UK, UK buyers face a choice. They can either pay premium prices for outdated Japanese technology, or get better EVs for less money from brands they've never heard of before. Look, first, if, you're currently, if you currently own a Honda or a Nissan EV, and it's meeting your needs, please, look, please don't feel like you've, done, you've made the wrong choice. You, you really haven't. Owner satisfaction, in my opinion, is what matters most. And those vehicles will continue serving you well for years to come. It's, it's not a problem. But if you're in the market for a new EV purchase, here's the reality of the competitive landscape right now. You see, the Honda E NY1 costs over £40,000, but delivers technology that was competitive about three years ago. The Nissan Aria starts at £38,000 and offers genuine engineering innovations, but it's competing against faster evolving alternatives. And this, this raises a really difficult question for buyers. When you're spending 40K on a vehicle you'll own for several years, should you, should you prioritize the brand or the technological capability? Do you know, because it's not that Japanese EVs are bad, they're well built and they're reliable vehicles to be fair. But Korean brands are currently offering more advanced technology at similar prices. And Chinese brands are delivering competitive features at a lower cost. Both come with comprehensive warranty coverage and expanding dealer networks. And if brand loyalty and dealer relationships matter to you most, and you're satisfied with your current technology levels, then Honda and Nissan remain valid choices. But if you want the most advanced EV technology available today, other manufacturers are currently leading. <laughs> let's, let's look at the, recover, the recovery scenarios. The recovery scenarios require honest assessment of market realities 
and competitive dynamics. You see, Honda is betting heavily on the upcoming Zero Series, or O Series, promising significant improvements in range and charging speeds by 2026. And their partnership with Sony could genuinely solve the software integration challenges that have held back their current offerings. The engineering talent at Honda is world-class. There's no question about their capability. But here's the strategic challenge. Should prospective buyers wait for promised breakthrough technology when proven alternatives are available today? And I think Nissan has an ambitious roadmap with multiple new models planned, including a redesigned Leaf, I believe, and electric versions of popular models like the Duke and the Qashqai. And again, their E-Force technology is genuinely innovative and can differentiate their future offerings. And the recent battery factory cancellation reflects tough economic decisions rather than abandoning their EV commitment. You see, in today's market, partnership strategies often make more financial sense then I think going it alone. Both manufacturers are invested in solid state battery technology for the late 2020s. And if successful, this could leapfrog them, I don't know, it could leapfrog current lithium ion limitations and, and restore their competitive position. But having analyzed that technical challenge, this timeline is ambitious, but it's not impossible. The question is whether the market will wait for breakthrough technology when incremental improvements are happening continuously elsewhere. These manufacturers need several things to align simultaneously. They need new platform launches, manufacturer scale up, and some severe crucial software development and favorable market conditions to be fair. And success is absolutely possible. These companies have overcome significant challenges in their, in their history before, but the window for that recovery is narrowing as competitors accelerate their own development programs. And look, the engineering gaps are specific and measurable, but more importantly, they're getting worse, unfortunately, rather than better. This is where Japanese manufacturers face their biggest challenge. Because I think Tesla and Chinese brands deliver continuous improvements through their over-the-air updates. Japanese EVs peak at delivery day and pretty much declined from there. And Korean manufacturers are deploying 350 kilowatt charging capability. Chinese brands are testing even faster systems. Japanese manufacturers are still optimizing for 50 kilowatt charging technology that was competitive about five years ago. Now, we all know that Tesla has eight years of real world data from the millions of vehicles that they've sold. And Chinese manufacturers are deploying level three features in production cars. Honda and Nissan are still working on level two systems that feel dated compared to competitors. They have substantial financial resources and they've got strong manufacturing expertise. And also they've got partnerships with Sony and that addresses some, some of the biggest weaknesses. I would say Honda's recovery probability is about 65%. They've got some financial resources, really strong manufacturing, and they've got the Sony partnership that addresses some of the biggest weaknesses including things like software integration. And the Zero series or O series represents a genuine fresh start rather than incremental improvement. Nissan's recovery, that's, that's about 45%. Their early EV experience provides valuable foundation knowledge and the, and the E-Force technology shows they can still innovate. And they still have the Renault Alliance that offers development cost sharing and market access. But this raises the fundamental question. If, if a company that literally created the mainstream EV market is now struggling to compete in that same market, what does that tell us about the pace of technological change in this industry? Now, the answer isn't necessarily negative. It just shows how rapidly technology evolves and how quickly new players can emerge. Markets reward execution over legacy, which creates opportunities for innovation, but also demands constant adaptation. Both manufacturers must execute flawlessly on multiple fronts. New platform launches by 2026, manufacturing scale-up, software development, and market positioning. And these are achievable goals, but they require sustained focus and investment. The competitive landscape is intense, and there's room for multiple successful EV manufacturers, in my opinion. But success depends on execution speed rather than market size limitations. Now, look, if you own a Honda or Nissan EV and you're satisfied with its performance, range, and its reliability, there's, there's really no need to second guess your decision. I'm gonna be honest with you. These vehicles will continue serving you well, like I said, and the positive ownership experience is pretty much what matters most. The decision really comes down to your priorities. 
If you value brand familiarity, established dealership re uh, relationships, and are comfortable with the current technology levels, then Honda and Nissan remain legitimate choices with strong build quality and reliability. However, <laughs> if you want the most advanced EV technology available today, faster charging, longer range, and better software integration, then you'll find that the Korean and Chinese manufacturers are currently ahead in these areas, as well as Tesla. Those three critical factors I promise to reveal, here's, here's how they apply. Factor one, technology development speed. Recovery requires accelerating development timelines while maintaining quality. Both manufacturers have the engineering talent to achieve this. Factor two is market execution. Success depends on perfect timing with new platform launches before 2026 or 2027. Missing this window makes recovery significantly harder. And factor three, investment commitment. Sustained financial commitment to EV development while managing current market challenges. You see, I think both companies have the resources if they maintain their focus. Those questions I asked earlier in the video, they're not meant to dismiss these manufacturers, but they're to highlight the competitive reality prospective buyers face. And brand familiarity versus technology leadership is a legitimate trade-off. Neither choice is wrong if it matches your priorities. You see, the key is making an informed decision based on current market realities rather than on historical performance. And look, here's what I'm genuinely excited to analyze next. Solid state battery um, development timelines. You see, if Honda and Nissan can deliver on their 2028 promises, it could create the biggest competitive shift in the EV market since Tesla's original roadmap. That potential comeback story is definitely worth exploring. Now, look, the automotive industry benefits from really strong competition, and I don't want to see any one of them fail. I genuinely hope these manufacturers succeed in their recovery plans because innovation thrives in multiple companies that they push each other forward. So let me ask you a question. What's your perspective? Are you happy with your Honda or your Nissan EV experience? And if you're in the market for an EV, do these competitive comparisons influence your thinking? And also, do you think traditional manufacturers can successfully transition to EV leadership? Thanks guys, because your insights help shape these analysis. So please share your experiences and your thoughts below. And also for weekly updates on how this competitive landscape evolves and affects UK buyers, join my Thursday catch up newsletter. Guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Des from The Electric Oracle and I'll see you in the next video.